So I wanted to give a little overview of a project I'm about to start, or kind of already have started. Um, the parts you see in front of you are the chassis parts for a RCA Radiola 80. The Radiola 80 was introduced in 1930, and as far as I can tell, is RCA's first um, super heterodyne radio to use the screen grid or tetrode tubes. Uh, this radio makes use of uh, four Type 24 tetrodes as well as two Type 27 triodes, two Type 45 triodes, and one Type 80 rectifier. This piece here in front is a receiver chassis. So it has a tuning capacitor here. And the piece in the back is the amplifier, speaker, and power supply. And you can see there's a large greenish cable back there at the left that connects the two chassis together. Um, so I first got these two chassis, the one in the front and the power supply, back in January. Um, but when I hooked it up and tested it out, it didn't work. It turned out there were two bad coils in the receiver to um, IF transformers. And in fact... The schematic here. It was this coil and this coil. I believe that were that had breaks in them. They had no continuity. Um, so if you look all the way in the background, you'll see another part that looks like this receiver chassis. I recently acquired that and salvaged two coils from it, and now the radio L80 seems to work. Um, when I turn it on, you'll notice that. The audio is a bit distorted, and that's because right now I only have one Type 45 triode in it for the power amplifier. I did have two, but one of them uh, sprung a leak and turned into an arc lamp. So right now I'm working it on one. It does work, it just doesn't sound very good. I will be getting a replacement very soon, but for the purposes of this video, you can see that the receiver does work. Uh, the coils, the coils that are in there are inside little cans like this. It's kind of interesting. When you open this up, the coils are no longer in here, but it has like a little shield, and then inside here, and this is the coil. The coil would go right there like that on these metal braces. See, there's a hole in the end for it to in there and then a pin goes in to hold it in and then it connects to these which are the um, the trimming capacitors and that's how you get your tuned transformer for tuning so um, I'm not sure which one it is on here but one of these was open and another coil just like this was open because it didn't have this copper disc I'm not quite sure what the point of the copper disc is if you look at the schematic here, it says right there, I don't know if you can see that or not, copper disc between coils and it draws a little disc, and you can see from the coil there is in fact a copper disc there in between the coils. So it's kind of interesting, I'm not quite sure what that's for. This is the only coil that has that, and it also has the copper cover on it. The other coils have a steel cover. That's the schematic. Um, this is the receiver part up here at the top and the power supply part down here at the bottom. And this is where the Type 45s are. So you can see these working together to drive this transformer to drive the speaker. So I've only got one of these in. So basically what that means is you're only getting half of the uh, sine wave or whatever the wave it might be, half of the wave to drive the speaker. So you can hear it, it's just not that clear. This is the connector here to go up to the other chassis. Another thing, the reason why I transplanted coils onto this chassis instead of just using the other chassis is because this chassis has a tone control 
while the other chassis does not. Um, now the downside is when I got went to work on this today, you'll notice that the tone control here is connected to this coil, which today I discovered this coil is also open. So right now the tone control is out of circuit. I just jumped the wire across this coil, which will be okay because the schematic for the other one, which I also have, simply has nothing there. It's just a straight connection right through. So basically I've turned this radio into one like this where there's no coil or tone control at all here. So over the next few months or so, I will get to work building a cabinet for this. You notice that my switch here is just on this long wire, and that's because this switch mounts on the side of the cabinet when you when you have a cabinet. If you look at the location diagram, you notice that it also just has the switch going off on the side here which will then bolt to the side of the cabinet when you have a cabinet. So this is what it looks like underneath basically, a diagram of where everything is underneath the um, power supply chassis. And same thing for the receiver chassis. So you can see there are those coils that look like that. I also want the you notice that it looks like the copper disc has one flange bent that way and one bent that way. But on the coil that I just showed you, they're straight out the sides. Now the one that I replaced, the one that's in here now, does have the flanges bent but they're both bent in the same direction. So again, I have no idea what they're doing. Anyways, this one has the tone control here. And that's that tone coil. Call it a reactor. Reactor is basically the old word for inductor. Um, and then the tone control either the tone control controls how much current flows through here. So when the tone control is um, fully at one extreme, most of the current flows through here and it swamps out. The blo that blocks the um, high frequencies. When the tone control is in the other extreme, this is basically shorted out and you get all of the frequencies. So I'll give you a little demonstration and over the next few months I'll be building a cabinet for this and perhaps I will show you the steps along the way. Let me turn this on. Wait for it to warm up. Turn off the lights so you can see the dial better in the tubes. So it does work, it just doesn't sound very good. But that's about it for now. Hopefully we'll have an update for this soon. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.